When I started working in the stage industry, I know about few departments. But there is one department not that many artists talk about it. Can you guess it? It is match move and layout. They play a crucial part in creating shots with all the camera information provided from the set. Laying a shot for departments like animation, lighting, and even for asset and compositing. I had an opportunity to talk with Nidhi, who been in the industry for more than 10 years, solving problems for match more and layout in major companies working for movies and TV shows. This video contains a lot of vital information about match more and layout, so make sure to take some notes and let's get started. What is MatchMove? MatchMove is generating a 3D camera using live action footage, which we all know. If you don't, then yeah, it's basically we get a live action shot and we regenerate a camera environment, animation or uh, object animation, anything in for, it, for 3D world to add CG to it to a live action plate. That's basically match move. And there are lots of softwares that are being used uh, in production houses, big production houses. The one that I prefer is 3D Equalizer. It's the most popular one that's being used. Some small studios use PF Track as well. And uh, if you want more information, you can visit their website, 3dequalizer.com, and you will have all tutorials and uh, all the tools and everything available. And so I cannot show how to track it because I don't have the software available, but I can definitely show you a small presentation that I made, uh, which explains that how we start and uh, what all scenarios we can use MashMove for. Okay. So this is a simple counter track. Uh, what you're saying in case of ship, there was like a blue screen and there was a small, this piece of geo with the, I'll go back. So we had a, this bit was there in the plate, but everything else is CG. It was all blue all blue screen which was later later removed by comp and then uh, we tracked the camera before that and provided it to 3d department and then uh, they basically added the ship along with this bridge and all this is dmp everything else was uh, digital matte painting so it's a mix of 3d and 2d together Hey, Nidhi, I have a question. Uh, when you said about uh, camera tracking, right? So, like, when you got the plate, like, what are the information you need to track the plate? So, the information we need is basically we are regenerating the same camera that was being used on set. So, we need film back settings. We need uh, what camera was used. So, you need to know uh, what was the, you know, uh, what resolution of the was shot so you can get the right film back settings and we need to have the focal length information you need to have lens scripts to solve lens distortion and all that is taken care by on-set supervisors uh, there are people uh, who, who are specifically assigned with this job to collect on-set information on-set data they also shoot uh, hdris and other reference images that are being used all through the departments in post-production. Nice. All good? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, you can keep going, yeah. Okay. So... This is an interesting shot because this is more like a extension, shot extension from the camera. So when the camera was shot, 
and we started tracking it was uh oops So when we got the camera plate, it was just this much, this much frame. And it was all blue screen again. There was, uh, none of this was there. None of this set was there. Nothing was there. It was all blue screen. And then we added this whole CG environment behind these characters. And the camera was just a was supposed to pull out further away. So we added this extra uh, camera motion to the layout camera to make it look like this, what we are seeing right now. Nice, that's a pretty good shot, Nidhi. Uh, but like, uh, let me ask you something. So when you when you say it, like the camera was went to a certain extent and there was blue screen, this pullover camera was done by the matchment department or the layout department or a different? Uh, well, it was done by layout mm -hmm. and match move was done by one person. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, but in, so that's one thing in smaller studios, a lot of times layout and match move are done by a single artist. But at bigger studios, this department is more segregated. Like layout is done by a layout artist and match move is done by trackers. trackers. They are, yeah, they specialize in tracking. Um, they do not know about layout mm -hmm. that, at that point when they're tracking it. Okay. So like you worked on the industry for a while, right? So like if I ask you what would be uh, the difference between a layout artist and a match move, like uh, what would be your uh, thoughts on it? Uh, match move artist's task is limited to tracking. So it can be tracking camera, it can be tracking object, it can be rotomation. But with layout, the your, your task list increases so what happens is layout is responsible for anything that's being passed down to lighting to uh, animation to uh, effects to comp so layout is like a gate mm -hmm. so so anything that like so so we have previous previous does their animation then we have uh, tracking who does their tracking. And then all these two departments work is supposed to go down the pipeline, right? Yeah. So layout is the person who checks tracking and previs and if there is any additional animation that's being done by layout artists. Oh, nice. So basically shot designing and uh, making sure that everything uh, passes properly down the pipeline with updated assets or anything is layout's job. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah I can proceed here. Yeah. Okay. This is a simple camera track. Uh, it wasn't, uh, the tricky part was this piece of geo because the spider was supposed to reflect in this uh, piece of geometry in a certain way. So that was the complexity of the shot. So when you're tracking, you it's not like, oh, it's a plane, just put a plane there. No, when you're tracking, try to, uh, try to just create the correct geometry, how it was angled, how a wall could have been there. Like it could be a little confusing when you see a shot, but try to uh, observe as much as you can when you are uh, going to start tracking any shot. So that's important to understand the plate, understand the environment and understand the camera move when you are going to start tracking. 
Hey, Nidhi, uh, I'll, uh, I have a question based on what you just said, because when you track a camera, it's just like an empty space, right? So for right. example, if you're using a PF track or 3D equalizer, so do you get the ground plane or do you have to set it up in a way that you can find it in Maya or in equalizer? You can set up a ground plane in equalizer. It's got like basic geometry. You can put, uh, you can generate basic geometry based on your track points. Mm -hmm. Like if you select your points, it can create a mesh on top of it. But I prefer to take everything to Maya Mm -hmm. Unless I have a LiDAR or a piece of geo that I should match it to, then I finish the track in equalizer. But if I have to create custom geometry, then I prefer to take the whole thing to Maya and scale it up according to the real world scale and then proceed from there. Okay. And the first, first and foremost important thing is yes, to create the ground plane. That's the starting point for any custom geometry okay so how do you come up with your scale like uh, you can do it in equalizer or do you have to come back to maya uh you can do it in equalizer too mm -hmm. but again as i said that for this if i have a lidar or a geometry that i'm supposed to match it to i already have the correct scale because i'm bringing it from maya so you have like a six feet character or a six feet cube just scale it up according to that okay makes sense yeah uh, yeah but in case you are starting uh, to build a geo from based on your track points then uh, if you have a character in your scene then just put a six feet character or like it's just a average height like six feet is a regular uh, generic human character height in 3d okay so just scale it up according to that Okay, you can proceed it to the next slide. Okay, then... These tracks were interesting for... Uh, from character matchmation point of view. It was not a... not important for the camera to track because... Uh, we didn't have anything in the background or, you know, we didn't have any CG extension or anything else. But with the, the important CG part for these shots was uh, the body track. And uh, so this is also part of tracking. Like if you have a character which needs something CG, it could be a limb replacement, it could be a weapon, it could be anything that needs to be part of tracking, that needs to be tracked from the tracking department. Hey, Nidhi, when you said like you body track, so did you uh, track their neck so that they can put the animation on or? Yes, so I, I mean, we didn't have exact models mm -hmm. so what i did was do a proper body track for the shoulders and the head which gave motion for the neck and that worked for us oh, okay makes sense yeah so the chain animation uh, is it like is it like cg right it's all cg i believe yeah that's all cg that was done by animation oh okay nice Okay, this is a little gross shot, but I like uh, it because of the complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, the complex part of that shot was... <laughs> the matchmation for this mouth for, uh, for the CG spider, basically. So we had to, we didn't have any model again. So I had to build this part as an animated geo uh, in tracking. And I had to create my own uh, small, I had to do my own rigging to, yeah, to uh, around this mount so I could have more control and then animated it to match the outline of the mouth. 
and the mouth was actually overstretched like she w- the real mouth like the real human cannot open a mouth like that so i had to match it according to a modified plate that was done by calm oh okay but the output is really impressive yeah me. so you have to go and uh, match move like a geo in maya like each and every frame so that it would fit the spider right yeah so oh, the first God. step the first step was uh, the rigid head track mm-hmm. which gave me a base which gave me a um, uh, you know what do you say a rough motion of the head mm-hmm. and then i had to uh, yeah create a mouth that fit i had to do like a single frame mouth line up first so i can put the mouth there and then i had to animate each frame and match the outline either yes. yeah sounds like a tedious job it was it it included like she's opening her mouth here it included a lot of r and d mm-hmm. but eventually it all worked <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good though yeah this is also interesting uh task for me because i think you could relate with this a lot dinesh because this involves dmp <laughs> so this is how the plate shot was this is how the plate was you can see the crane and everything and then they extended all the all these buildings in uh, post so it was all dmp and my task was to create there were multiple shots in the same environment so my task was to create a geometry that works for all shots which is like the geometry for the environment and uh, project these buildings that dmp was painting on top of that so it was a camera layout camera tracking and dmp projection Oh, nice. Uh, anyway, so when you showed that shot, uh, so you got the plate and you tracked your camera. So you gave them like uh, basic cubes, you know, where the line up the buildings and everything. Then they did the matte painting or how did it work for you? Uh, no, they did the matte painting before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what I did initially was uh, I just... did a checkerboard projection mm-hmm. and uh, i gave like like the, all these uh lines and all these things were cg actually and oh. then yeah so it, it's all projection like all these uh lines and drawings you see around that's all projection oh nice it will disappear as we move back i believe Yeah. So those were all all projection. So when I uh, did projection, I did a checkerboard projection then I passed it to DMP. DMP already painted a DMP for for all these buildings. So what I did, I took their DMP and wherever there were missing parts, then they painted that later on. So there was like back and forth between DMP and my layout. Oh nice. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. Okay. This is an interesting task as well. This is a plate with this makeup on top of the face of uh, on, on top of the skin and they wanted to make it look like it's growing. and uh, so i needed to do this uh deformation track for the skin so that it looks like it's growing on top of face it was challenging because it's a mirror reflection so I've, and and there was no camera track nothing to track for the camera so i had to do a camera lock to the head track and then add this uh deformation to the skin 
which was challenging because there were no markers or anything on her face to track except for these makeup she had. Oh, nice. So you gave a geo to the FX department tracking the face, then they created the wines, isn't it? No, this was a texture. Oh, texture. Okay. So yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So it was done in uh, lighting mm -hmm. and uh, these textures was, I think, uh, made in a way. This is not FX for sure. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, how they did that, I don't really recall how exactly they were animated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this was done in, the, in textures. Because I was at one point tracking using these textures to make sure that it was sticking well. Nice. It's a, it's a quite, uh, quite interesting job, definitely, for sure. It is, uh, it is like, uh, to me, tracking is more like solving a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know the start and you know the end. And it either works or it doesn't. Okay. So you have to keep trying until it works for what you need. Nice. So this was an interesting task, too. Uh, it's basically two different plates. So what you see inside is a different plate and what you see outside is a different plate and blending these two plates together with a CG element. This is a CG element. Together was the challenging part. And I love working on this shot. And it was mostly uh, 3D projection, 3D, mm -hmm. 3D projection for this ring, the entrance, 3D projection for the bottom, what we see inside. So, uh, and 3D projection for all this ground we see. And there was a separate projection for the characters in foreground. So, the so you said like, uh, that's uh, like those are two different plates, right? So both have the same camera information, or did he have? No. Like, oh. Yeah, the, these two plates have had uh, different focal length. Wow. They were tracked separately, mm -hmm. and then uh, I had to blend these plates together and made sure that everything is like working with how it should work. So, yeah, yep. that uh, sounds like really complicated, but at the end, it looks good, though. It was complicated. Uh, we also had this challenge to match this. This was the reference for the CG extension, mm -hmm. and we had to match CG with this thing. Uh, so, and CG had construct like 3D asset was constructed in a way that it was positioned somewhere else. And so blending these two plates and finding the right position for all the elements was a challenging part. So it, it, I won't say it was just me. There was another layout artist. She, she, was, she was doing the asset part of this. Mm -hmm. So she had to modify and move around stuff to make the shot work as well. Okay. But like, isn't it like... Um... I don't know, like, I don't know, studio differs from, uh, like, their pipeline. So, wouldn't it be easier, like, if you guys giving, like, a rudimentary geometry, like a sphere or, like, a cylinder for this, and they create an asset based on that, or they create an asset first, then you bring it in and test it out? Well, this was, uh, uh, like, there was, like, multiple shots around the same environment, so you can't really... Uh, make an asset based on one shot. But we can definitely move around stuff if the, there is a complication. Like in this one, we had to move the, uh, the scaffolding on this side, whereas it was supposed to be somewhere here in whole sequence. But for one shot, we had to move it because we didn't have a choice. Oh. It had to go with this. So those kind of complications happen. But 
we can do that adjustment with one shot but we won't be doing it for like the whole sequence where assets is built like rationally with according to how it's supposed to be uh, according to their blueprints and everything they get yeah it makes sense yeah <laughs> This is a simple DMP projection. It involved effects. So this uh, blast explosion was done in effects. And then there was a lot of DMP painting because uh, this was a very different plate. I think you can see a little bit of plate. Yeah, this is how the plate was. And this is how it looked later on. A lot of addition, additional elements. This was for animation layout, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, yeah just camera track with this these arrows pointed at her. So there was like character standing here. So there was single pose, single frame character pose, and uh, then that was for the three D position, and then arrows around her. Oh, nice. This is how camera track looks like when you're tracking you have a model that you match it to okay and you this is like a moving object and the camera so have moving cones and then you have a background and that's how it looks like this was challenging because this is a GoPro camera and I don't like tracking GoPro cameras because they have a lot of distortion mm -hmm. and the, the, the film backs are not very clear what you use on it. At least at the time when I did the shot, which was like five years ago, it was, I, I didn't have any of that information. But now yeah, you have all the information available for tracking uh, drone shots or GoPro cameras as well. And uh, we didn't have any lens grid for these shots. We didn't have anything. So everything was like solved in equalizer based on a lot of assumption. Okay. But this still came out pretty good, I think. Hey, Nidhi, so you talked about like uh, distortion, right? So yeah. in a camera, there is distortion on distortion. Like, what's the difference? Like, what's the difference between like a distorted plate and a distorted plate? So distortion is like, uh, you know, our lenses are uh, concave. It's it's like concave convex lens. You have mm -hmm. like lens lenses are like that. So when you capture something, you have distortion on the corners. So oh, you mean like it bends, right? Yeah, let me oh. see if I can find a reference where I can show that. Okay. So meanwhile, what I'll do, uh, guys, so if you guys have any question based on what Nidhi showed so far, if you guys have any question based on what she showed, you guys can ask. If you guys try to ask, put it on the chat or you guys can just ask her uh, to her. I think I'll take silent as the answer. Hey, Nidhi. Hey. So, Nidhi here. Uh, just a question. So, you, you said like you get all the uh, information, like the lens information or focal length, everything is from the shoot. But uh, I know in some scenarios, like in some cases, like we don't get any information from the Sure. So, uh, in that case, uh, what will be your first approach to the shots? My first, so first of all, I go ask the production what camera was used and if they have if they have information. Usually, they know what camera was used to shoot the shot. They may not have a focal length all the time available, mm -hmm. especially with the smaller shows like TV shows and all. 
in case you don't have focal length, you can solve it in 3D tracking software. But uh, if you're missing, you, you don't even have camera information that what camera was used to shoot the shot, then go by the resolution, the image resolution. So there's an aspect ratio to the image resolution and you can uh, pick the film back that works with that image resolution and then solve your focal length based on that. That's the, yeah, that will be the starting point for your so the final result uh, will be accurate. Sorry? But still, uh, the final result uh, will be accurate, like even uh, you, don't, you don't get the uh, edge information on other stuff? Yeah, I mean, eventually it will work. There's, there's no, all the shots can be tracked in every situation, everything can be tracked. It just depends how accurate it will be, how close we can get. So if we don't have camera information, uh, there is, of course, there are ways to solve it. So that goes like the first thing is just to go with the resolution and look for the aspect ratio. And once you have the aspect ratio, then go with those film back settings so when you have film back uh, so film back and focal length are like dependent on each other you change one it can compensate that difference in the other it's like that so if you have wrong film back settings but your aspect ratio is correct it will compensate the difference in the focal length so eventually it will look right when you line up all the characters and your geometry and your scale is correct, it will work. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm looking for a lens grid. <laughs> You're looking for a... Actually, if I've found one okay so this is how lens grid looks like mm -hmm. and this is how distortion is this is how a flattened uh, undistorted lens grid looks like okay so you have uh, so a shot is like no this is not a good example Um, so yeah, a lens grid looks like that, but this, to me, this looks like a checkerboard, but you will always have distortion. Like it will be curving in or out Okay. depending on your lens, usually curving, uh, in. So when you, uh, undistort it, it flattens out. So it goes like when you have on actual plate it will be curved in but when you undistorted it, it will be more going out oh like so more. like you're saying yeah. that when you get a plate it's usually like undistorted or distorted and you undistort it and bring it to maya then you match everything at the end you guys like reverse the process right yes okay. so the aim is we get the footage from editorial mm -hmm. we it's, it's like whatever plate they get, they have to return or they have to deliver it to client in that same distorted form. Okay. So, but we don't, we, when we work in 3D, we work on undistorted because we flatten it. We, we, because we don't have, our lenses in 3D doesn't have distortion. Okay, makes sense, yeah. So we have to undistort the plate, put everything straight, and then redistort it back, give the distortion back on it. So it's like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks, Nidhi. Thanks for explaining that. Now uh, I know the difference between, and I think people know it too. So. No problem. Actually, uh, if you're working on a single image in Photoshop. If you have, uh, if if you're doing assets or if you're uh, building, uh, say, character 
uh, characters, uh, character asset or anything, uh, and you have a reference image, there are uh, there is a plugin in Photoshop that can redistort your image. It's got some uh, predefined uh, settings, like for Canon and uh, for Nikon, all these cameras that are being used to take these reference images on set. And you can use those to undistort your image uh, for these reference images for assets and use those to build your more accurate uh, yeah, uh, uh, characters or whatever you are building. So it's, uh, yeah. When you do match proof, when you start tracking, it's also like it's not important for it to just look right in your camera view. It's also important that it should look right in perspective. Otherwise, it's pointless most of the times. If your perspective isn't right, then uh, it's it's not okay to pass it down to anybody. You need to make it right in all views, like camera view as well as perspective. This was a interesting shot because this was a stereo camera track and uh, I cannot show stereo how it was tracked here, but this was uh, really long and you can see all sides of the, all sides of the uh, extension, which was interesting. There was supposed to be a character here, which wasn't uh, ready when I did the track, but yeah. Uh, that looks like a really complicated shot. It's just going 360. Yeah. Uh, in 360 shots, it's it's important to have the, your foreground, like your foreground is sometimes what happens when you have background rotating around, you miss the foreground. Your foreground could be jittery. It's important to match the foreground background as well in those types of shots. Usually that's where people mess up. Like you start tracking background, it keeps uh, tracking and you miss the foreground, like foreground is all wonky. It's jumping around. So make sure that your foreground, background, midground, everything is sticking well. Uh, this was a, a very uh, interesting task for me because this was a uh, this track was not used in the in any of the shots, but this was used to build an asset, a hero environment asset for the movie. So what they did, they uh, they flew through this environment in a helicopter and shot these four, one, two, three, four, four footages. And they rebuilt the whole environment using tracking. So I was not the only person. I did this part, but there were three other trackers who tracked this sh uh, along with me. And we recreated this geo. So it was... Uh, so this part is somewhere here, this part is somewhere here, and this part is somewhere here. So we had four angles and we needed to build one big environment, this this whole structure. And they could have used LiDAR or some or any other technology, but we needed this whole it was it was practically impossible to make at LiDAR for such big environments. Now you have mega scans and all those things, but this is like 2013 so it was not that techno that was not there at that time so we had to track all these uh, four footages and generate this big environment yeah it sounds like a really tedious job it was this is actually sped up it was act it was around 6000 7000 frames long 
Oh my god, did he go to home after that project? <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave us time. It wasn't like you have to do now. Yeah, that's <laughs> they good. did. Yeah. Um so this is how it was. This is the uh this is how they shot. They flew on in a helicopter and they were shooting all this terrain and they wow. took like yeah it was really interesting and they used it to make this nice big gigantic asset so this is where the whole story takes place in prometheus and this is uh how they built the whole environment And this was this show was stereo too, stereoscopic. So this part is all used from tracking and then regenerated. This is all CG. Oh, nice. I think this is also CG, a lot of texture and all. But the base geo is uh, was done in track, so it was like maybe ten percent, twenty percent contribution. Yeah. Uh, this was also a test uh, that we did when we were doing uh, 47 Ronin. Uh, we did facial capture for this creature. That was the first time I did facial capture. So this was, uh, so we had this guy uh, acting out all the expression they needed. And we had like these three camera setups side and front and uh, we tracked those cameras we tracked the head and we um, we tracked all these points on this guy's face mm -hmm. and uh, then we passed it to this is called videogrammetry so like you have photogrammetry you have multiple angles and you generate an asset we did we regenerated expression using videogrammetry so we had like same point in all three camera angles and uh, we got like a moving uh, moving head along with the moving, uh, what do you say, so moving points, which was used to drive expression on this creature. Oh. So did you do this like um, in a different software or you can do this in Maya too? No, we did it in Equalizer. The oh, whole okay. tracking was in Equalizer. So oh, you nice. can yeah you can like uh so equalizer has a very good system where uh you can track multiple cameras together mm. so for this we had one technique where we could make one camera angle as the hero uh primary camera and the other two cameras were like the secondary cameras which were driven by this camera so it was all calibrated in a very nice way that we got like really nice depth and I don't think so I could have done that in any other software any better mm -hmm. and uh, but nowadays you have really good facial capture technique uh, which I'll show you later I've added some shots from that too so yeah that was how the expression was tracked for this creature oh, that looks pretty cool it was nice, but what we tracked, only like 50% of those expressions actually transferred to the creature because he's gigantic. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, probably meters had to exaggerate his expression later on. Yeah. Yeah. But it was fun tracking this too. <laughs> so yeah, this is a good example of facial tracking. How we do face track now, like these days, we have those uh, a fancy uh, set of port for uh, capturing the facial expression, where you have a helmet attached with uh, four wide-angled cameras. 
and it captures uh, you have a guy wearing guy wearing a suit and it, he's got all those markers on the face and uh, <clears throat> they are doing full dialogues and everything and then we tracked those this was done in ilm and uh, they had a very good system like very uh, defined pipeline on how to do facial capture so they had like first you track the points you track the head and you uh, put it on the actual uh, actor who was acting at that point mm -hmm. so there was no turtle there was an actor acting all these things so you put those expressions on the actor's face first clean up the expressions uh, if you have skin pinching or anything clean up that and then transfer those expression to the uh, actual character like turtle this turtle so once they once we pass uh, once we transfer the facial expression on the character it was used in animation as a first pass like that like like a first pass animation for them oh, nice. and in some cases like if if the face cap was done really well, then it was used as the final pass as well. And this one also, not just face cap, this also included body track, and they used that body track as a uh, first pass for the uh, turtle's body motion as well. Short. So, yeah. like for a body track and like a facial track like that, like how long does it usually they give you? Like it depends upon. Uh, it depends upon the complexity, or like uh, do production have something you know, like bid before. Uh, so these body tracks and face tracks were done in <clears throat> in a very big studio with a very fancy pipeline mm -hmm. so they have uh, they had like uh, their tools are so smart that when you transfer or retarget anything it just uh, it just uh, finishes 50% task for you oh, nice. so what you're left to do yeah so when you so when I transfer when when you transfer expressions to a CG character, you probably have to do like add because I told you when you transfer facial uh, expression on a CG character that big, only fifty percent of the expressions are actually visible. So then you have to either exaggerate the expression or you know uh, add some extra motion like. You know, they want ears to move along with the nose, uh, sorry, along with the expression, or they want nose to nostrils to move along with the expression, which are not there in the actual actor, but they want it to be visible on a turtle. So those kind of things are there. So th those are not that difficult. Okay. Because you have a plate and you're looking at that plate and then you're matching, you make sure that the turtle looks like that actor at the end as well. The way they are saying the dialogue, their their dialogue is matching, their, like those types of things. So your deadlines are are decent, like they're mm -hmm. not too tight that they, they will stress you out, okay. but they are not that relaxed that you're spending a week on a shot, no, okay. not like that too. But that yeah, they are... Yeah, they are they are reasonable, I would say. Okay. Uh, this was very interesting shot for me because uh, uh, this this uh, the complexity of this shot was very silly. It was silly because you see this plane is flying on a runway strip. But when we tracked, every time we tracked the shot, our runway strip was turning round. It, oh. it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, in perspective, it, it wasn't moving straight. Because the person who shot uh, this shot took the wrong focal length and that wrong focal length kept causing our 
plane to turn instead of going straight <laughs> and we were pretty sure we were like no this 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 focal lens needs to work why is it not working i went to like a couple of artists none of us could figure out ultimately we had to change the focal lens we thought that we could be wrong with this focal lens and we <clears throat> finally did that and instead of this plane they there was a car that was driving and we had to track that car to and then they replaced the car with the plane <laughs> oh, wow so yeah this was an interesting task too this is uh, uh i added this one to explain how sometimes you get post destruction environment and uh, pre destruction environment so this shot had two sets one was pre destruction which is like this how you are seeing right now it's it's full plane interior and then one was post destruction which is like this when uh, it actually explodes uh, and you are seeing a broken plane so uh, you get you come in, yeah, i mean you get sequences like this where you have to be aware of like what part are you working on whether you are on a pre post destruction shot or you're on a pre destruction shot so it's good to check your edit all the time constantly okay. and uh, keep yourself updated like where your shot is in a sequence and uh, <clears throat> make sure to use the right asset and uh, do the right thing and provide the right information to down the pipeline nice yeah this one um is about uh, how so the cape was a cg cape and we did full body track of the superman Um. And, and yeah i did not do the body track in this case i did the camera track but i provided uh so as i told you in bigger studios you have uh, this this tracking and layout job is like separate at the studio npc where i uh, worked on man of steel they had even rotomation and camera tracking department as separate departments so a camera tracker did not do rotomation and a rotomation artist did not do camera track but in this shot we needed a you know joint effort we needed someone to track the body for the rotomation artist so they can you know they have a base to work with mm -hmm. and then they animate they added the shoulders and other movements to it but if it could have because it's so close to camera it would have been hard for a rotomation artist to match pixel perfect track oh nice so it's yeah <laughs> so like it's important what i'm trying to say is even though you don't do track it's important to learn everything that i mean uh it's important to learn everything about your shot so you can this there's a chance you may end up doing all these types of things as well like rotomation how to check your camera how to check your character lineup through your camera even if you're just a <clears throat> camera tracker nice <clears throat> these shots uh this this shot particularly is uh we used to call it in npc uh cg takeover shots mm -hmm. so cg takeover shots are you have a cg i'm oh, sorry you have a plate and then suddenly there is cg and then there is plate those types of uh tasks so this was one of those cases where you had a so you add a plate then cg then it switch back to the and plate it, again and then it blends into the plate oh, again oh nice so yeah uh this one is uh this was again uh this 
Pinky, this is where it may answer your question where you asked that when you don't have any uh, camera information, what yeah. do you do? So this one was a stock footage. When you get stock footage, uh, when studio buys stock footage, they usually don't get camera information. So this was one case where I didn't have any information and I had to do a lot of, uh, you know, same guesswork with resolution and find a uh, film back settings that could work with the with that resolution and then solve a camera and this uh all this part just right near this this waterfall is plate and beyond that is all sea oh. so camera track projection and <clears throat> cg so, Nidhi, so when you talked about camera track and everything, so usually, uh, like the match me people, they do the projection or it depends upon the studio where they would like just give some work. Depends on the studio, okay. but I will encourage anyone who's learning tracking. Uh, it, it's fun to do this and it's interesting to know how this works because at the end, even if you're not project doing projection, you're providing a geometry for that. And you should know how it's going to work. Uh, this was also same. So there was a plate and then there was a CG extension. This is more simple shots in terms of set extensions. And uh, yeah, so to sum it all, Match Move includes camera track, object track, body track, deformation track, facial track, and anything after that is all layout, deletery to his other departments. Wow, well, it does a lot of stuff in Match Move. I didn't know. I thought like you know, people just do camera track, but uh, today he explained everything. So second question I had, uh, Nidhi, was in the scene from The Expanse where you had them landing on that planet or that moon, and uh, when they landed and they got out of the ship, you said that the plate uh, was only this size. Yeah. But you had to zoom out. Yes. Zooming out, did you have to distort the plate? Yes, of course. Because whenever we are using plate in 3D, it's yeah. always undistorted. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> when we comp it, we need to distort it back. Is oh, no. Uh, no, no. What I mean is, if you move this, right now you have it where they're close. Yeah. If you move to about here, you said this is about the size. Yeah. But then the camera moves away and slightly up at the same time, or is just a, is that just a zoom out? Oh, no. This is, by zoom out, I mean we moved the camera away. We didn't literally do a focal zoom. We didn't change the focal length. We are oh, okay, yeah. Camera. That's what I was wondering about. If you had to fake the focal change because yeah. of the zoom, right? If that no, makes no, sense. No, no. Yeah. no. okay. We can. Uh, that's the thing. Like, if you go uh, from a long lens to a wider lens, you start to see uh, <clears throat> more distortion on mm -hmm. the edges. So it's better, unless it's it's being asked to do something like that it's best to move the camera in uh in in like uh physical world the camera. yes instead yeah. of just zoom yeah did you ever have it have did they ever have a need where you had to actually distort the plate to fake uh focal length changes or zoom changes or yes i had to like recently uh i did a shot where they they shot the plate with a very wide angle and they wanted to pull out further <laughs> okay but it was impossible because eventually every time i was trying to pull it out it was coming to like four millimeter or like five millimeter which didn't make sense it was like weirdly distorted so in that case i had to do some projection tricks like put some cards and project it and pull the camera away so the plate doesn't look like it's it's slipping but mm -hmm. it's moving away, and yet I'm saving uh, my edges from distorting too much. Cool. 
Awesome. Thanks, dude. No problem.